Ready? Thank you for tuning in to another edition of Interview with DJ Nocturna. If you're watching on my YouTube channel, please like, subscribe, and share, and comment if you like this interview. I am very happy to welcome back on the show the astrologer of love, <laughs> the beautiful Anastasia Cosmic Astrologer. Welcome back. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. What a beautiful way to introduce me. I appreciate that. Thank you. I've even well, got the, the love stone here, the rose quartz. Oh, yeah, yeah. I got, I have a lot of, you know, love too. I, I do have a. <laughs> Look at famous, this. Oh, yeah. Well, it matches my background, huh? So that's like, that's like meant for you, the pink background there. So it looks like it's, uh, yeah, you, you, well, you, you definitely embody the archetype of Aphrodite. <laughs> Thank you. Know, you. The goddess of love, since all of your teachings are, you know, deal specifically with love in many ways. Mm. Not everything, but yeah. a lot. Yeah. And, you know, you have been very instrumental in um, a lot of the teachings regarding the Venus star point that, you know, you had some classes on that and the YouTube videos. Mm talks about the Venus star point and the planet Venus and everything else related to love from what I know. So, and since we have, um, we have a Valentine's day coming up, this is such an appropriate time. And I know this came suddenly this, this, we, we did not plan this interview. No. <laughs> uh, yeah. So like, like Uranus, like coming into the picture really quickly, it just happened. So it's nice to be spontaneous, right? It is, and that's um, that's fire signs. And you're a Sagittarian. I'm an Aries, so Sagittarius, Aries, fire. They live in the moment. They 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 are um, inspired through spontaneity. You know, being free and just acting in the moment. So it's, it's it suits us. You know, it works, which is awesome. Now you've been on the. On, on my show a few times, you know, on, on my podcast, I believe three times, we talked about many interesting topics, the conjunction of the age of Aquarius, you know, the Venus star point. And, uh, and I think the very beginning, we talked a little bit about just astrology and the purpose of the birth charts and all that too, as well. So now I, I'm really interested because, you know, this is one of my favorite topics. After all, I do have, um, Venus conjunct Neptune, which is the higher octave of love. So I got a lot of Venus in my chart, too. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So what is um, what is the what's going on with the frequency of love right now with, uh, with being we're in the year 2022? And uh, February is uh, it's a great month. I mean, uh, I, I just feel so many wonderful things on 2022. Hmm. Yeah, look, there's so much going on. I mean, I was reflecting a little bit about, you know, this um, talk that we're going to have and just thinking about a few things that I could share with everybody. And uh, I find my mind just going into so many different layers of things. And, and so I had to kind of try and bring it back and go, okay, well, let, let's just focus on Venus, the goddess of love and beauty and harmony, balance, and, and those words are really important, even though they're words that are just thrown around really loosely, right? They're really important. Um, I don't want to focus on this too much, but it is important to just kind of bring it in. And that is, you know, the state of the world at the moment is really out of balance, right? And so this is where Venus is very powerful because she helps us restore balance. That's, that's mm -hmm. her frequency. She restores the beauty, harmony, love, balance equilibrium in inside ourselves inside our own heart and then of course you know in the through the entire collective and and the cosmos and the universe itself she's the cosmic heartbeat she's that pulse that's pulsating right through our heart and the heart of the universe if you like so venus's role at the moment because we just had a an eve uh, sorry a morning star venus which was um a morning star Venus just simply refers to when Venus goes retrograde uh, for those that may not know. So recently we had the planet Venus moving retrograde in her orbit, which basically means she she disappears. She goes into if we want to use some mythology or metaphors, we would say she went into the underworld 
right? She takes that journey for about 40 days. This happens every, um, almost every couple of years for all of us, that is. So it's a time where we tend to reevaluate what's going on in our life from the point of view of love. So if we are in a relationship, we tend to reevaluate what's going on in this relationship you know what's what's making me happy what's making me unhappy have i outgrown this relationship is does it come to just a natural sort of separation you know that those sorts of things start to come up very strongly we start to reevaluate the love that we have for our partner if we are in a relationship the love that we have for our friends as well because venus connects to our social life you know anything you do that where you enjoy yourself whatever that is because it's different things for all of us right whatever you do that brings you a sense of pleasure and joy is basically uh related to venus the goddess of love because whatever we enjoy we have some connection of love to it in some kind of way of course there are you know different degrees of love right but things that we enjoy and pleasure is all about Venus. So where we are at the moment with the Venus morning sign, actually, I wanted to ask you, Nocturna, did you, have you had a chance to wake up and see her as the morning star? Because you know that I have, I, I showed you a little video and. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I have not. Um, oh, I, you, I, you have I, to I, do I it. <laughs> it. <laughs> you know, I, I think we don't have a, a view here very well of, of Venus that well. Um, well, you need to be facing, you know, the eastern horizon where the sun would rise. So if you can find a spot there, I don't know if you're where you are living. Yeah, I don't know if you have that side, but if you can, it's worth doing. You won't regret it. You'll just, you'll be totally blessed by her frequency and energy by doing it because you, you're honoring her, you know, and this is something that anybody can do. First of all, it's the most magnificent star to see in the morning sky. She's, she's this glorious diamond. It's like this beautiful diamond just sparkling in this gorgeous sky. It's so powerful. So that's, that's her rising as the morning star at the moment. And we're, we're, we've been able to see her for the last, I think it's about four or five days in a row actually. And um, it would be the same for you, for your location where you are, because she's the Eastern Morning Star at the moment. So any of you interested in, in seeing the, um, the visual planet, the star herself, you know, it's, it's, a, it's an awesome thing to do. And even from the point of view of invoking love, you know, invoking, speaking to the goddess, these stars, these wandering stars, which are the planets, which mm -hmm. describe different archetypes, Mm -hmm. meaning different characteristics and themes and uh, everything about life really so v if venus is the goddess of love she's a deity that people could draw upon you know that could you can have a conversation with her in other words you know you, you can you can call mm -hmm. her into your heart you know and and speak to her and, and tell her what your heart longs for venus is what we attract you know, she's, she's like a magnet. So mm -hmm. she corresponds to being a magnetic principle. It's what we draw and attract in our life. So yeah, at the moment, as she's uh, been reborn into the morning star in the sign of Capricorn, it brings in a whole other um, layer of things through the sign of Capricorn. You know, Capricorns are pretty reserved kind of sign it's pretty serious it's earthy it's ruled by saturn um it implies dedication discipline commitment so how how can we look at that from the point of view of love and relationships at the moment first of all the venus morning star has begun an eight new uh, 80 year new cycle for all of us right so there's a there's an 80 year cycle of this venus star in capricorn so that's going to be located somewhere in your birth chart your astrological birth chart and that's just going to show you what she lights up for you in your life because whatever venus touches she lights it up like like a diamond in in the morning sky when we see her rise she just has this magnetic power she lights things up she amplifies and she brings to us the very things that we need sometimes the things we need are not always the things we want <laughs> you know so we have to 
we have to be able to understand what are the things that we really do need, you know, at, at different times in our life. It might not always be the exact thing we want, but it is the thing that we need. And with Capricorn, it, it has more of a serious kind of edge to it. You know, Venus is not a serious planet, as it were. She's, she's a lover, right? But, um, you know, in the sign of Capricorn, we take a, a bit of a different kind of step into the field of relationships. Um, and it's it's probably about getting more, just becoming more serious and more realistic about my mm -hmm. experience in relationships. What are my expectations of my partner? What are my values and expectations in this uh, agreement of relationship between myself and this other person? You know, those sorts of things are coming under strong review, well, have been for the last 40 days or so, right? And so now we're being reborn into a new journey of experience, having had a 40 day period of reflection, revision of where am I at in my life with love? Am I, am I in love? Am I unhappy? Am I loving? Am I allowing myself to be loved? Because Venus is not only giving love, but it's receiving love. We have to be mm -hmm. able to receive it as well, right? So there's many different layers to her. Um, but do you, do you have any questions or comments before I because I was going to share my screen it might seem a little bit alien to some people but um just to kind of draw some reference to a few things about Venus's journey at the moment so for those <clears throat> so for those who are not um who don't have a, a partner and they it, it's all about just love love of friends love of family so just taking things more seriously it's actually it, it is all those things, but even even more importantly, it is the relationship you have with yourself. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good. And, good. Yeah. And the relationship we have with ourselves, in my opinion, is the most important relationship we will ever have other than the one that we have with source creation to all things. Mm -hmm. Right. Because the more we work on ourselves that is the relationship we have with ourselves. the healthier and happier our relationships are going to be with others. So even if, yeah, even if we're not in a relationship, which I'm not in a relationship, but I've, you know, I've used this time as an opportunity to check in on myself, you know, how's my relationship going with me? What, what am I, you know, sort of working on for myself right and capricorn is work as well it is kind of um you know putting um it's it's kind of like being the ceo of yourself capricorn rules ceos in companies for instance that's what would connect to um capricorn a ceo in a company for instance right so think about that as being your own authority your own author the author of the story that you are writing, meaning mm -hmm. life journey and experience you are having and, and mm -hmm. being really clear and um, honest and, and dedicated to that path. One other thing that I think um, is really important here as well is because we're talking about Capricorn and Saturn being the ruler, which is where Venus is at, which is her as the morning star, Saturn brings in a lot of things where um, some of the themes that can come up are finishing uh, long-term relationships. It can be that. It can be uh, meeting people at this time where you've got some very strong karmic link with them because Saturn connects to our karma. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So it can be completing things, meeting certain karmic deeds that must be met in order for the soul to continue to evolve. There's deep layers. It just depends which way you want to look at it, you know. Um, does that answer the question? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, you know me. I, I, uh, I, I do a lot of research. Oh so, yeah, I, I totally understand what you mean. Cool. Yeah. Hmm, shall I keep going? Sure, absolutely. Cool. So 
At the moment, uh, today is the 11th of February for me where I am. I think it's the 10th for you, right? So in yep. a few days' time, what's going to happen is Mars and Venus are going to come together in the sky. And we call that a conjunction in astrology. A conjunction just simply means two bodies that have aligned uh, mm -hmm. completely mm -hmm. side by side in, in the zodiac relative to the tropical zodiac, which is what we use in Western astrology. So anyway, Mars, Mars and Venus are coming together in the sign of Capricorn. So, you know, there's a lot of erotic undertones, passion, fire, lust. Um, it, there could be anger. There could be a lot of different things that come up with this. Um, the joining of Mars and Venus are the two planets that connect to relationships sex love passion lust intimacy connecting yep. and yep. they are very very different and that's the thing to always understand about venus and mars because venus is how we share our time with somebody that we love or we enjoy our, we enjoy their company right it's a sharing thing but when you're talking about mars mars is not about sharing mars is about pushing things and pushing people away because Mars is about independence, autonomy, freedom, assertion, right? So this is the, the, a very interesting dynamic when Mars and Venus come together because there can be, there can be so much passion and lust and romance and, you know, you meet somebody and, you know, it's all on the fire, the flames, the alarm, everything's just going off, right? And, and it can be awesome. Um, but some of the challenges around that can be that you, you want to do the Venus thing, which is to love and share and give. And then the Mars component comes in and says, whoa, ha hang on a minute. I'm, I'm giving way too much over here. I I'm losing that sense of independence within myself. I need to kind of have my space and feel like I'm free as well. So it's a, it's a really interesting dynamic, Mars and Venus, even though they both correspond to, you know, being the relationship sort of archetypes or planets, they're both very different in nature and in their needs and what they stand for. Yet they are lovers, you know, Mars and Venus had a passionate love affair. If you go back into mythology, mm -hmm. Venus was married to Vulcan, but she had, you know, massive love, passionate love affairs with mars right <laughs> so you know there's there's that whole level of things and i mean at, at a very light fun kind of level if we want to talk about valentine's weekend this is a great energy for those lovers out there who you know are in a situation where they can explore that field you know with their beloved whether it's a a new relationship whether it's a a relationship that just started a few weeks ago or a few months ago or even if you've been in a relationship for a few years sometimes you know not sometimes i think quite often what can happen in people's relationships is that it become things become a routine you know and it can become boring and there's this monotonous kind of day in day out we're doing the same thing the same thing over and over again well the the beauty of this vibration just at that playful um, enjoyment sort of level can be, it can really spice up your love life. You know, it can spice up the bedroom. <laughs> it can spice up that it sort of inspire that energy inside you to kind of be more creative, you know, in your love life, in your relationship with your partner. That is both, both people together, you know, participating in some creative exploration from the point of view of love, lust, passion, and uh, just having a different experience, right? Because this is a new energy it's new from the point of view of the Venus star point, but it is also closing up another cycle relative to Mars and Venus, which that level is um, just a little bit too complex to bring into today's session. So I'll, I'll leave that out. Um, but for example, I'll just, and I won't share the screen for too long because I know for many people, this will be fairly alien um, visuals and i don't want to kind of overwhelm people but um for instance if we go to okay so for those of you watching that haven't seen what this is before this is an astrological birth chart this happens to be the birth chart 
of the 17th of February of 2022, right? So basically what we're looking at is we're looking at the position of the planets on the 17th of February, 2022, which is just in a few days time. And what we're seeing down here is Mars and Venus. And I'll just uh, quickly grab a little tool just to kind of highlight because people might not be aware of the symbols, but those two symbols there, well, that's Mars and Venus, okay? And they're exactly aligned together. And the goddess Vesta is there as well. And of course, Pluto. So mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's an, a really intensified energy and, and Vesta is really about what am I going to invest myself into? And this is Vesta next to Mars and Venus. So it's relationships, it's creativity, mm. it's passion. Mm. It's, it, I mean, if you, if you are single and you're not interested in a relationship, this energy is still just as powerful. You would just, you would tune into it and embody it from the point of view of injecting it into a creative project. You might be an artist in, in a myriad of ways, a singer, a dancer, a, a painter, a, a whatever, right? There's so many different forms of art. I've just named the more common ones, right? So this is a really uh, valuable, powerful, intense time to inject your creative desires into something that you are really serious about, something that you are prepared to commit to. You're prepared to put the time in and you're prepared to be in it for the long haul because Capricorn and Saturn rules time you know it's it's not a fleeting thing it, it would need to be something that you maybe it's you've been thinking about writing a book or um taking a particular uh traveling so it could be anything you know it really could be anything but something creative that ignites that that life and that passion inside you that makes you feel inspired about your own creative journey as a person, as a soul, as a woman, as a man, you know, just in your own journey. So there's a lot to gain from this. And Vesta, the goddess Vesta, which the word investment comes from, speaks to, well, what am I, what do I really want to invest myself into? You know, it's, it's a real, um, dedication, devotion and dedication to my creative pursuits or journeys and or my journey in relationship to others and my beloved and so forth. And of course, with Pluto, there is always the potential there for death rebirth. Now, let's take that from the point of view of the death rebirth aspect uh, that we have on a psychological, emotional, or spiritual level, right? So in very basic English, that could be the end of a relationship. That could be the complete transformation of your current relationship. But that doesn't happen just magically. We, we need to be aware of this. We need to be aware of these energies and we need to make that conscious decision to integrate with these energies when we do that that's when they can feel most alive and real within us and in our life's experiences right so the, the fascinating thing about this so nocturna is that these planets mars and venus they are going to be dancing together for ages so for the rest of february mm -hmm. um for all of march okay Venus and Mars will be dancing together. And then um, on the 7th of March, they are going to come together again in the next sign in Aquarius. Mm. And that's a really interesting energy. Um, it's very, very different to Capricorn. Um, but the thing that makes it even more interesting is that there's a planet called Pluto, for those of you that are not aware, and Pluto is a, a very powerful force and frequency and planet uh, for everything, for the, for the Earth, for, for our, our experiences in life, uh, for our soul's journey particularly. And Pluto does bring in the components of experience where we are transformed, but typically sort of 
forced to transform, if you like. It's not an easy, that the transformation of Pluto is not a walk in the park. It's not Venus, right? It's not love and flowers and stuff like that. It's going into the darkness, going into the underworld of your own psychology, of your own inner, deepest, most private fears, desires, thoughts, insecurities, whatever it is. So Pluto acts as an agent to help us transform those inner layers that are very private and most of which we are very unconscious of as well. So there's that layer to it that comes in. So Pluto, in other words, dancing around here with the Mars Venus Vesta, there's ample opportunity to to really um, evolve and transform something very, very deep. And another way to say that would be to say, because Capricorn connects to uh, how we are conditioned in life and we are conditioned from birth and we are also conditioned from past lives. So with Pluto in Capricorn with these planets, there's an implication there that we have an opportunity to transform some really conditioned patterns in the way we step into relationships the way we step out of relationships, the way we invite relationships, all the different patterns that we have in how we love and relate in the world of relationships now have an opportunity to be transformed because a lot of those behaviors that we display in relationships, a lot of which that we are not even aware about, like for example, you're in a relationship with somebody and they turn around and say to you, you know, it really pisses me off when you do this or when you behave like this and sometimes you could be in a position where when they say that to you you think wow i didn't even realize i was like that am i really like that and this is what relationships do they act as a mirror right they bring (laughs) to our attention the things that we are blindsided by so with pluto in the picture here it's saying This is a chance to transform some conditioned kind of patterns and behaviors that Mm -hmm. are no longer helping you to grow in your relationships, to transform in your relationships, to evolve, right? And to get rid of things that no longer serve you. You you, you just, we, because if we don't transform conditioned patterns and behaviors, we remain stagnant. And that's what happens in relationships. People become stagnant because they, they don't embrace evolution and growth. And part of the reason, if not the biggest reason, is because that brings up insecurity in people. And so when you keep things the same and familiar, it keeps things secure, but it also keeps things really boring. <laughs> so these are the things and, that... <laughs> and, yeah, and a lot of people don't like change. That's another thing too. No, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I I have a question. Um, Some people might be wondering, right? um, How would this transit fit uh, affect me? You know, does it is does does that depend on where their Venus and where their Mars is in their birth chart? It does. I mean, everything that I just said are some of the main features that anybody can expect to uh, be presented with right? I've given various examples uh, in order for people to find something that they can relate to, because there's a lot of different things that can come out of this. And yes, it it will also be very strongly linked to if this was somebody's birth chart, right? And the Venus and Mars in this particular chart that we are seeing is what's, it's, they are located in what's called the third house okay in an astrological birth chart we have 12 houses and you think of them like each house represents a particular area of life so for instance in the third house that is the area of communication education learning siblings uh your local kind of uh neighborhood neighbors and things like that and lots of other things as well but if if this was your chart and you had the mars and venus transit happening in your third house then it would bring up huge things about communication in your relationship Mm -hmm. and it could bring conflict because mars is there there could be a lot of verbal conflict 
but that will actually air things out. Sometimes conflict can be very healthy and necessary because it airs the shit out, you know, rather than keeping it blocked and suppressed, which is what a lot of people can do. And then it just builds and builds and builds and explodes, right? So there can be a healthy level of conflict, not in, not in a way where you're attacking somebody um, or projecting your crap onto them, but in a way where you are able to be assertive, right, with your words and be direct, right, and mm-hmm. communicate what you want to communicate. You know, I've done loads of relationship counselling and I can tell you now one of the biggest problems in most relationships is the inability to be able to communicate to one another and feel like feeling understood or heard by their partner. Mm -hmm. Yep. So it's huge. So, yeah, short answer to your question, uh, the Venus Mars energy that's lined up for the next couple of months will speak through the examples that I gave in different ways for different people and of course it will also come down to their own birth chart and where these patterns are being highlighted in their birth chart yeah yeah so yeah, i mean yeah, if yeah, we kind of like, yeah that, that kind of looks like my birth chart a little bit not really but the houses <laughs> i don't know yeah because it's <laughs> copy ascendant yeah yeah uh, but uh, but not, not I mean, I don't know where, where my Venus is transiting right now, but I'll go look later. But yeah. Well, uh, Venus for you is, I believe she's in your third house. Exactly. Oh. Here. <laughs> yeah. As, as we're looking at it here. So this uh-huh. is kind of like a mirror image, Nocturna, for what's happening in your chart in the third house. Yeah. So, you know, siblings that you know, that comes in, right? That sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, And also, you know, with Venus there, it's reevaluating, you know, um, all your communications that you have with people, you know, it could be um, family members, it could be friends, it could be uh, because in the line of work that you do, you know, you interview people, you speak to people and things like that. So you might be going through a revalue or you would have been when Venus was retrograde, right? Going through some sort of um, reflective process of, no, I'm going to cut that out. I'm not going to do it that way. I'm not going to speak that long or I'm going to speak longer or I'm going to ask these questions or I'm not going to ask those questions. You know what I mean? It's like it would have given you a different kind of way of seeing what you have actually been doing on that level. Yeah, and and, is that... And, and, and I- yeah, and, and I got Pluto right there. So that's those are all the dark people I interview. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm the Venus, right? So <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And then there's Mars. So that's the other dark people that I interview. <laughs> I'm yeah. just joking. I am, yeah, uh, yeah. Mars isn't really dark. Um, it's it's more Pluto know, yeah. that would be dark. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> but um, for the next few months, people can really expect to be uh working through understanding more um being inspired more with creativity and passion and things like that um and and sort of as i said before because it's all in capricorn till the 7th of march at least you know it's really about well you know my time is valuable right and so what do I really want to put my time into? I don't, I don't want to waste my time responding to 5 million messages that basically mean nothing, for instance, right? You know, what? it's, it's really about making use and, and really valuing actually your own time and what you are doing with it, right? So there's a lot of that. Um, and as we kind of go forward, I just want to show this and then we can kind of start closing it up a bit if you like. Um, let me see. So what happens is, uh, here we go. Now look at this date here, 28th of April, 2022. And what we have here is Venus, a planet called Neptune and a planet called Jupiter. They all come together in the sign of Pisces. Mm. And this is a a really, I I don't have time to go into it today, but I just did want to bring it in as a little highlight because all you Pisces people out there are going to really relish and, you know, just this is the most beautiful, inspirational, divine sort of spark that could um, 
that you can really connect with in your life around love and things that are important to you creatively and otherwise in terms of your growth as well as a person spiritually and otherwise and just things that you enjoy creative pro projects um things like that there's a really there's a divine grace that's that's uh sort of coming upon us if you like the last time these three were together in this sign was 165 years ago right so this is not a regular occurrence of these planets coming together it's a hugely uh beautiful inspirational abundant source of energy that can really uh help people a lot particularly with their um well a lot of different things but you know say you go you say you've been going through a really tough time because of this whole pandemic thing right and you're you're you know there's there's you've lost your job or you know there's there's millions of things that have happened and i don't want to focus too much on that but um you know if 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 life has beaten you up as it were right the last couple of years which it has done so for a lot of people this energy mm -hmm. can be very re renewing from the point of view of um igniting that that sense of um belief and faith and inspiration again right in life and cosmos and divinity mm -hmm. and yourself oh, and your life journey so it's it's not to be underestimated that that beautiful energy of those three lining up is very very rare and and just finally before we kind of wrap it up i also want to show this and i, I won't talk about it but it is um mind-blowing um <clears throat> so where was it did i save the chart no i didn't save the chart never mind i i won't worry about that but if we're just thinking about the whole venus mars thing and their journey through capricorn then their journey in march through aquarius this is a long time for mars and venus to be side by side in two different signs this is over a few months right it's it's not that normal for that to occur um so there's a there's a and because pluto is there in the picture to me on a collective sort of level it it speaks to the evolution of how we perceive relationships as well think about the 1960s right when um you know free love and all that sort of stuff was around mm -hmm. i know there was a lot of political things going on and all the darker sort of stuff but i just want to stick to the love relationship stuff mm -hmm. um there was the hippie movement you know love not war all that sort of stuff that's when the pill the contraceptive pill was first introduced for instance that changed lives for for so many women you know, mm -hmm. who it changed um, the lives of for women from the point of view of being able to have, you know, a profession and, and have an identity in the world out there. You know, that there was strong, there was a strong um, Mars Venus cycle emphasis back then as well in the 1960s. So big things happen with Mars Venus cycles is what I'm trying to say. And now we're, we're at a different point, you know, we're at 2022. The way the world looks at the moment, which is very uncertain for a lot of us, there are so many layers of things unfolding, but the Mars Venus is <clears throat> is teaching us something very important, Capricorn and Aquarius. Capricorn is the uh, aligning ourselves with becoming our own authority in our creative pursuits, loves and passions, knowing what we want. Instead of, you know, instead of sort of, um, <clears throat> needing somebody else to tell you what you what you should be doing, what you shouldn't be doing, how you should do it, how you shouldn't do it, but rather knowing yourself, having the authority inside you, you know, and, and deciding from that space. It's a very self-empowered position to be in, and it's very authentic because you're following your heart. Venus is the heart, you know. Yeah. So, and then in Aquarius, it's, it's really, I think it's going to bring in some very interesting dynamics uh, we've, we've already seen a massive, you know, um, evolution and transformation in the whole gender, <clears throat> pardon me, gender um, names, you know, his, hers, you know, all, all those uh, non-binary, mm -hmm. you know, heterosexual, bisexual, queer, gay, straight, you know, whatever. I mean, 
a lot of these labels never existed you know, before. So these are all new. This is very Aquarian, you know, of course. So when Pluto goes into Aquarius in 2023, there's, there's going to be massive, massive, massive changes uh, for all of us and for the whole world. But what's going to happen in um, 2024, this happens, even though this is far away, two years is nothing. Believe me, it'll go like that. You'll remember this yeah, talk <laughs> and you'll say, wow, did we talk about that two years ago? Well, what's going to happen is Mars <clears throat> and Venus and Pluto all come together in Aquarius. Now, mm -hmm. that happened 248 years ago. The last time that happened. So there's big, yeah. big, big, big things going on. A lot of stuff happening. <laughs> and, and and are you going to be um, now? I, I know you have a, a YouTube channel, Anastasia Cosmic Astrologer, and you are going to talk about this further, right? Yes, I am. The the Mars uh, Mars Venus cycle, and particularly with the Pluto coming into the picture later on. Yes, I will be talking a lot more about it, but I really wanted to bring it in today. And I mean, the, the main takeaway that I would uh, love for people to to take from today is just, just to know that um, impermanence is actually a good thing because that's what helps us evolve and grow, right? right. Things can't stay the same, you know, right. and we are, we are being really tested. You know, the last couple of years we've been severely tested with all of that and we still are. And that's that will still continue throughout 2022. That's not going to go away. But at least for the Valentine's weekend, you can just you know, <laughs> lap up the Mars Venus, <laughs> get that goddess activated get that warrior activated and and just enjoy the passion and creative energy that can be born out of that as well you know and any thoughts any reflections that you have about that what have you got going on this weekend <laughs> any hot dates <laughs> <laughs> just um you know i'm constantly working so i'm just uh no, you, you can't work this weekend, Nocturna. It's it's <laughs> Valentine's weekend. It's, no. it's all about you know, you know, a lot of people don't celebrate Valentine's Day. They have uh, you know, that's why this may be for people. That's why this is not just Valentine's Day of love, it's Valentine's Day of all kinds of love. So love for your family, love for your love for your dog, love for your cat. Well, right? Venus is about love, yes. So yeah. it doesn't have love to for be yourself. You know, Yeah, so personal relationship yeah so anybody listening now they you know they don't have a, a relationship they can all they you know they have to look at themselves and their animals or family so yeah so it's good i mean you know a few years ago if you were talking about this i'll be like what what is she talking about but now i understand everything you said <laughs> i understood it you know so uh is, you know, we, we, you know, we have been communicating. You've been on the show a few times. I've been watching and following you on your YouTube channel. And uh, you have you have certainly um, enlightened me, you know, in many, very many ways, like a transformation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, I'm very grateful for you coming on the show to talk about this, especially on a special day, which is in a, a few days from now. Well, so, you know um, what? You've got Venus in Scorpio. So it's women that are going to help you transform. Oh yeah. Oh, is that what it says? Well, oh yeah, because of, because of, because of Scorpio. Well, yes, because Scorpio is transformation oh, okay. and Venus is women. Okay, sorry, Charlie. I'm not gonna work. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna put Charlie just quick, really quickly for anybody who don't know who Charlie is. This is Charlie. Hey, Charlie. Okay, yeah. So yeah, he's just a little bit shy. He doesn't like to talk when I'm yeah, but anyway, I'm gonna put him back. Okay, Charlie. All he's right. he's adorable. He and I have a special bond. <laughs> I know, yeah. yeah, he love he loves you. He'll <laughs> he'll message me on Valentine's Day. I'm sure he will. Yeah, very definitely. He even sends me videos. I know, yeah. <laughs> yeah well, he hasn't sent me videos and he will but you know, he is he listened, he heard everything you said. So he's probably going to ask me questions later about what you just said, but yeah, um, I'll, I'll let him know. 
<laughs> you know, thank you so much for being on the show. I'm always happy to have you uh, on the show and, um, you know, the pink background there. Uh, <laughs> and uh, Beautiful. I love uh, it. And again, if anybody wanted to, now you do readings as well. You do birth chart readings and all kinds yes. of readings. Yes, many, many. It, yeah, if you you want to just quickly run down what the kind of reading you do for people, so they so they, they want to get a reading. Well, I mean, look, think about it like this: instead of instead of naming what type of readings, if you think about it from the level of if if you want to know kind of where where you're at at the moment in life with your love life, with your professional life, with your creative self, with your family, with your children, with your money, with your health, anything. Well, astrology has the ability to help you understand what's going on in your life, whether it's now, tomorrow, the next three years or the last two years. It, it just depends what you want to explore and look at. You know, there's many different readings. Um, and mm -hmm. so because some people don't necessarily, some people watching might not know what a reading is or an astrological reading um just think about it from the level of well do i want to have more insight into myself my life the conditions around me what's going on what can i improve on what can i do better what's going to help me where are the challenges how can i work around those challenges these are just some of the things that astrology is very very useful for and there's much deeper layers than that but i'm just sort of keeping it very simple yeah so there's and, and, and they can send you they can send you an email yeah they can just send me an email and and you know just just if you don't know what astrology is about or you've never had a reading just let me know just shoot me an email and just just let me know what's what you're interested in what what you're concerned about what you want to explore you know just yeah it doesn't have to be it just needs to be what you need and what you want that's that's all it needs to be yeah and that and your and your and your email uh so it's anastasia a-n-a-s-t-a-s-i-a -A -A, all lowercase underscore zoe z-o-e at proton p-r-o-t-o-n mail.com um and then there's just my youtube channel anastasia cosmic astrologer if you just type in that name you'll find my channel there's hundreds of videos there for free that you can have access to any time. And yeah, so. Mm. Thank you very much for being on the show. Uh, Thank the you for having me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm going to, I'm going to, um, I'm going to uh, turn this off. Not recorded. Okay. One moment. Thank you, Anastasia. Happy Valentine's Day. And to you. Thank you. Much love. Bye. Okay.